antibodies can attack that virus and get rid of it and you get better. This one, however, we've never had it in our system before and that's why we don't know anything about it. And more importantly, the virus does not, ha it's, it's attacking us and there's no bodily reserve or no body antibodies that we have to combat it. And that's why it's been so horrible for us. And that's why we have to wait for this season to pass. Now, only Jesus could tell you, is this virus going to act like all the other viruses that we get? And like I said, without, unless you got your ear to Jesus's mouth, no one really knows that. However, what we're doing is looking at all, like you said, the last pandemic was 100 years ago. And all we can do is look to what has happened in the world history. And world history tells us that when the weather warms up, this virus is probably going to act like all the other viruses that have, you know, that we've dealt with, and it's going to go away. So the answer to your question is unknown to man right now, but we suspect that it will behave like the other viruses. As a lay person, if you will, my, me? my question would have to be, if we if we believe that this virus will will follow the same patterns as, as other viruses, and we should wait or hopefully wait for the weather to change, then how long do we do? Is it going to be April? Is it going to be May? Is it thirty days of eighty degree weather? Does it have to be? You understand what I'm saying? When when you say the weather I changing. <laughs> Well, it'll okay, go from 50 start. degrees to 70 degrees, but is that enough? And will, will people come outside if, because they believe, okay, it's now 70 degrees, uh, the, the, I can go outside now. And, and so my, it's just a big concern I have because people do listen to what, unfortunately, the president and, and doctors say, and we do have to follow what the doctors say, but it's not clear. When you, when you say, when the weather changes, well, you know, well, at least here on the East Coast, in April, late April, we'll go from, from 50 degrees to 70 degrees, and, and then in May, we'll go from 70 degrees to 80 degrees. How hot, and, and I listen to Mike, and Mike, nobody's going to turn the heat up trying to kill the germ, by the way. <laughs> but when Mike, when, when Mike talks about, do we just turn up the heat, it's actually a very good question. How hot must it be to kill this germ? And I, and okay. I, and, and I'm not, you know, what I, what you I know, told I you, you had the answer, before. you would give it to us, so it's, it's kind of just a what I mentioned before. And I, I have one more question. And then, okay. and then Chief, I'll, I'll get off the phone. Yes, sir. It's something that's really been puzzling me. They say quarantine for 14 to 15 days. And so I quarantined for 14 to 15 days. But that doesn't mean when I walk outside on the 16th day, I'm not going to catch this virus. You know, I've been listening to people say, well, I'm going to stay in the house for 14 days, and then it's going to be okay. I don't think that's what you all are telling people. If you go outside and you run into somebody who's carrying this virus, you will catch it. At least that's my understanding, or am I wrong? That's my question. You're and, and thanks for your You're call, Phil, as always. Yeah. Okay. Talk You're absolutely you. correct. Good questions, Phil. You're Doc. absolutely correct. And what you have to realize is, like, th that's an excellent question. Where did the absolutely. 14 days come from? You know, why 14 days? Well, the reason that number came up is because we know from other viruses that they can stay on a surface or anywhere and, and be contagious from about two to 10 days, two to nine or 10 days. So they said 14 days because none of the viruses that we know can survive on a surface for 14 days. So that's the basis of where that came from. Now, is it possible that this virus may last more than 14 days? Absolutely. But the, the other thing that comes into play is that if you get 
infected on day 10, then is that going to, is the virus still going to be day in 14 days? No, you got another 14 days that that virus or whoever gets it at day 10 is still spreading the virus for another 14 days. So, and that's why it's been so contagious is because we've been reinfected in reinfecting each other over and over again and it's just growing and growing and growing and if you were listening earlier when we said when people were at the Mardi Gras and then they left the Mardi Gras and went all back all over the world then of course they took coronavirus with them and now the cases in New Orleans are jumping up because the virus as soon as it hits your body it doesn't make you sick it has to multiply inside your body until a certain amount of bacteria are in your system, then it makes you sick. And that usually takes a couple of weeks. So it's, it's very compl- complicated virology is the study of these viruses. But the, the information that you got about, it gave you a wrong impression and that if we can just wait these 14 days, all these viruses are going to be dead and, you know, we'll be okay. That's not the case. Because everyone who gets infected, you know, if you remember or if you've been listening, when somebody gets infected, they say, okay, well, that's another 14 days. Or when you come in from outside the country, they quarantine you for 14 more days. And that's hopefully to, you know, get the virus out. But we all know that once you're infected, then the, 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 the length of time that you're infected or contagious is much longer than 14 days. So you're getting a bit of, you You got the information correct, but it's flawed in that there's no way that it, that we know who, how many people are infected and who is infected so that the period that, you know, like I said, if you get it on day 10 of your quarantine time, you know, then you got 14 more days to go And so it just keeps extending and extending and extending. And that's why the curve is still going up and not flat. And so our objective by the quarantining is to eventually with nature, with it getting hotter, that means the virus is going to be able to uh, live, well, not live, but last shorter periods of time on surfaces because it's hot and it doesn't do well in the heat, as well as keeping away from people or not reinfecting each other by being up on each other, we're hoping that those combinations of things will eventually flatten out that curve. And then when the season is gone, if it does like all the other viruses, then we should get a relief. But it's not going to happen in 14 days. And and just to clarify, Dr. Albright, because I know all of us sort of raised our eyebrows and to Phil's point, you know, who, who do you believe? Um, you know, this whole comment about Easter, was this an arbitrary thing? Was this to please a certain group of people? Where did he get this? Um, where, where did he get this? Okay. Target date. The president, okay. The president is looking to save his presidency. So he knows that the longer this, closure or shutdown of the whole country goes, the closer it gets to his election and what's the likelihood of you clutching his box when the whole world is in, the whole country is in chaos and shut down. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to introduce a time which, if you've been paying attention, nobody agrees with. Sure, He's saying by Easter if he can get everybody back to normal, he's going to be in better shape to save his presidency because, of course, as he always lets us know, he's the greatest president that we've ever had. Sure. And so if he can pull this off and things that get better and the stock market comes back, people, everybody's back to work, and he starts it off at Easter, well, then he's a shoe in for president. But that's not going to happen. Sure. And even though the Easter is his target date, he's going to have to change that as we get closer to Easter just looking at the number that now he today he said something different. He said, like, what about for the people in Iowa where they have a few infections? 
Should we keep them set, set down? Well, the truth of the matter is he doesn't know how many people from Iowa were in New Orleans at the sure. at the Mardi Gras. Sure. He doesn't know how many people from Iowa have come in from other states. Sure. You know, to, to so and the fact that they're not testing, we can't get a handle on that. So it's really it's really too bad that the president is trying to use a political basis to deal with this public health issue because he's talking about jeopardizing many, many thousands, maybe millions of lives because he's trying to get reelected. Sure. And he's um, ignoring the medical scientists who are telling him there's no way that this thing is going to be ready in two weeks. You know, with, with new cities exploding like New Orleans and Atlanta. Sure. You know, how the world and, and here in California, we're gearing up because just like um, uh, Governor Como said, New York is just the first place. Well, Washington was the first place it hit. Right. Then it hit uh, New York and it's tearing up New York. And he's saying, L.A., it's coming. And yeah. L.A. starting to get we're starting to get more cases all over L.A., and especially like in San Francisco. And so he's just saying, we're just the first bomb to explode, but it's going to be bombs all over. And if you look at the the data, it's showing you that he's right. Sure. Atlanta just blew up. New Orleans just blew up. L.A. is going to blow up. And so, you know, how is, how is all this going to be finished in a couple of weeks? Sure. You know, it's just, it just doesn't make any kind of logical sense. And it's unfortunate that the people who don't understand the disease process and you know or aren't medically trained they are just listening and they hope that he's right but there's really no scientific evidence that he's anywhere near where we're going to be we're going to be locked down with this for a while sure and and how long is a while nobody knows but i tell you it won't be in the next couple weeks so doc i have a couple of questions you you kind of lighten up the chat line now i have uh two questions okay and I'm just going to take them in the order I got them. I have a question from uh, Susan, then I have another one from Doug. And the uh, first question I have is that, um, so theoretically, could there be another wave after the quarantine is lifted? Absolutely. That's what the public health people are shouting all over the airway. They're saying, this is not over. Um, and you just, you know, because... The epicenters are presenting themselves one after another. You got sure. Washington, New York, um, California, New Orleans, Atlanta. Well, you think Chicago is going to be exempt? Chicago. So all these big cities where the populations are dense, you know, unless they, you know, continue with this uh, program of shutting everything down, they're going to be hit hard by this. And so there's no way that it's going to be gone. Now, it may, the, the situation in New York may improve, you know, but you're still going to have cases there. But these other places are going to be new and you're going to see New York repeated over and over again. That's what the experts are saying. Sure. And then and then the second question I have, uh, it, it goes back to your uh, earlier comments regarding the 14 uh, day timeline and um Doug was asking that um, he was saying that the 14 days is the time that it takes to show up in an, in an affected person. Is that correct? That's about correct. It takes about what we call an incubation period. From the time you get the virus until the time you're sick, it's about 14 days. Okay. So I, I, I'm hoping that uh, answered your question, Doug, that we got in off the chat line. Cause I, I, I think he may have, of, gotten uh either heard you wrong or maybe something you said kind of contradicted that so we just wanted to make sure that doug had the right information okay yeah excellent excellent well again doc now i know you've talked about hand washing and keeping your hands out of your face and those types of things um are there are there things that people can do now that we are in the social distance mode that will allow them to have just a little bit of 
normalcy, if you will, under the circumstances.